So let's talk about auto upgrade. The reason I'm talking about auto upgrade is a simple one. Uh, my good friend Mike Dietrich, uh, he and I were in India recently for the Yatra tour and he did a talk about patching and auto upgrade and he shamed me in front of the audience. He said, Connor, do you use auto upgrade? And I had to admit that I didn't, mainly because I'm lazy. And you know, he, he mocked me in front of the crowd and I was torn. There's There's two things I could do here. One is I could go to Oracle HR and report him and tell him <laughs> that he was being nasty to me. But perhaps that was uh, not the best way forward. Or I could try it myself. Now, I've heard and read lots of amazing things about auto upgrade, but I didn't want to give the auto upgrade folks any credit here. Or I didn't want to give them any breaks. I thought, I'm going to do as if I'm a total noob, which I, in fact, was for auto upgrade, and see if I could get it to work. So I googled a bit to get the basic steps and tried them, and so here's how it went, including any mistakes that I made and how to fix them. First thing I googled for was an auto upgrade config file. The very first sample I found, I had a look at it, and based on that I thought, well, maybe I'm going to need to create some folders. Maybe auto upgrade does that for me, I don't know, but I'd create them anyway. A bit more googling, let me know how to find the auto upgrade.jar file. Apparently, it used to be locked away in my Oracle support, but now you can just download it with a simple wget command. So I grabbed that. And then I edited my config file to at least bring it into alignment for how it would need to look on this virtual machine I was running. This particular database was running 19.26 or 27, and I knew that 19.28, the latest release update, was out. So I needed to be able to download those patches from my Oracle support. So the first thing I did was use the load password option. That creates a wallet, and therefore I need a wallet password. Once I've done that, I can then store my, my Oracle support credentials in there so it can use them to log in to download patches. That was harder than it seems because inside Oracle now we use pass keys, so I had to go find my old password for my Oracle support login. But once I'd done that, I'd created my key store in order to be able to download patches. Then it was time to download the patches I would need for 19.28. This is one of the cool things, not having to go search for the patch number and the various notes out on the internet about what patch to get for which platform, so that was pretty cool. It grabbed 19.28, the patch, and the associated JVM patch. And thank goodness, the one thing I always forget to do, it went and grabbed the latest O patch for me. Once I've done that, the next thing is to run auto upgrade in analyze mode. And because this was my first attempt, it bombed out. It looks like my config file is missing something. And in retrospect, that makes sense. Because I'm at the point now of analyzing a particular database, I need to let auto upgrade know what database it is. So I echoed out my Oracle SID. I can see that my database is DB192. And I added that to the file and I ran analyze again. That bombed out again, but my database is not running and that's the reason. Now, fair enough, I've only just booted this VM up. So that's why the database isn't yet started. Initially, I thought it would be nice if auto upgrade would automatically start my database in order to run the analyze. But then again, I might have all sorts of prerequisites or dependencies based on database startup if this was a real production server. So it's probably safer actually that auto upgrade just tells me, hey, start your database. I've got an alias in this VM called start all because I'm a lazy typist. And so I'll just use that to start my database up. Okay, let me try again now. Ah, uh, I probably should have guessed this. Auto upgrade, quite correctly, follows best practice to do out of place patching and upgrades. Therefore, it creates a brand new Oracle home. Now, in order to install a brand new Oracle home, it needs the base image for 19C. So I need to get that as well as the patch files in order to uh, create a brand new Oracle home into which the upgraded database will fall under. Luckily, I'm a data nerd and I never archive or delete off anything, so I can grab the 19C base image from one of my shared drives.
OK, now Analyze is running. I can check the state of this work. It runs in the background effectively, and I can just sit there and wait for it to now finish. I must admit, I did miss those last two lines where it told me where to look. So I did a find to look for any log files that had the word DB192 in them, and I figured that's where I needed to look. I had a look in there, and since this is just a plaything virtual machine, not a real system, this database is not in archive log mode. And so it's nice that Auto Upgrade tells me that I need to make a change to my configuration file about restore options because if my database isn't in archive log mode, then I can't do things like restore points and flashback and the like. I poke around a little bit more in the log file, but it all seems OK. So I'll just make that change in my config file. And then I think it could be time to let this thing run. So now comes the leap of faith and do this for real. I run auto upgrade now in deploy mode and off it goes. I can see all the tasks that are going to be run and I'll run a status command and we're already at 14%, which seems good. A little bit of Googling tells me that status minus A lets me do a top style or a continuous repeat of the command. So I'll do it on a 10 second repeat. I'll speed up this process because this is a VM on an old laptop, and so it ain't going to be exciting for you to watch the slowness of progression while it unzips all the files and applies the patches, etc. Sped up, and it's done. Now comes the big moment of truth. My Oracle home is still set to the old Oracle one, so I do need to rerun AuraEnv in order to pick up the fresh environment. But it's pretty cool that Auto Upgrade actually went and fixed up etc oratab for me in order to pick up that new environment so that's pretty cool now i've got the new environment let's see if my database is up and hey presto there we have my database fully patched to 19.28 so let me finish off with two important questions number one is will i use auto upgrade again for any real system i would for my play vms i'm still sitting on the fence not because of any issue with auto upgrade it's the fact that we do the out of place patching on my poor little laptop, which is so space constrained, I generally patch in place. Not that this is best practice, but simply to avoid chewing up too much space on my VM uh, virtual disk images because my laptop is running very tight on its poor little SSD. The second question is, should you use it? And the answer for that is obviously, hell yes. So much simpler just to have a config file and run auto upgrade than to go looking for patches, remembering opatch, doing all the prerequisites and all that other stuff. The more steps you have to do, the more chances you have of doing human error. So rest assured, auto upgrade is definitely the way to go.